Hello and welcome. I'm Sam, aka Not a Snark, and this is my second development diary for Mongoose Traveller for Foundry. First of all, a subject that's been asked about by a number of people, and that is support for Foundry version 12. Now, currently, the published version of the system doesn't work on v12. Uh, there's the most obvious problem is you can't make skill rolls. However, um, if we make a skill roll, that's now been fixed. Um, basically, there, uh, the way you make synchronous skill rolls has changed. Um, and since we do a reasonable amount of post-processing on, on the actual roll itself to work out, say, the type of success or failure, chain bonuses and the like, and also even more post-processing when you make attack rolls, um, those roles were synchronous, which no longer worked. Um, so that, that's had to be changed. The other thing which didn't work was um, we have a number of places where we have a drop-down list of skills. For example, um, on weapons, you can choose the default skill type to use with that weapon. Um, this list is obtained from the template.json, uh, which is where you define everything that goes on to an actor or an item. And we have a list of skills, basically this list, which is defined on actors. And for some item types, we go and read that list to so we can generate a, a, a nice drop down list. However, version 12 no longer allows you access to that. So where we store that data has had to change. It's now having to be moved into code and taken out of the template. And when we create an actor, um, the information has to be copied onto, onto the actor. It's given us some advantages as well, since we can store a smaller amount of data and expand, expand some of the obvious stuff. Um, when, when it gets added to the actor and it also makes internationalization a bit simpler so yeah there's some improvements to that uh, there's that's the work on that's not complete um, it's still being worked on maybe another week or two before it's working um, there's also a number of deprecated features which need tidying up some of the handlebars um, templates have changed but they could be left until later but I mean, currently it's sort of working um, but it'll as i said it'll be a while yet before um i i push out the next patch release for this um so other things i was working on before looking at the v12 issues um we now added computers to spacecraft so you can select what tech level of computer and it will work out the um, amount of processing available you can also select whether it's a core computer or standard computer um, i do need to keep track of what software packages are installed on the ship and that's probably a more general question of how we define software on other type of items Currently, we have the concept of an augment, so expert systems and things which give a character bonuses to skills. Um, whether we can reuse that for general software types, I don't know. Or maybe I need an, to add an, another existing uh, item type. Um, I'm generally against the proliferation of different object types, but it might turn out that that's the best, best way of doing it. So um, next up, we're going to be also looking at items. Um, actually, if I open up this character, take a look at their equipment. Um, so we have a laser carbine here, and it has a number of traits. So these traits is basically just a um, free text field though it there is processing done on it so it needs to have um certain 
attributes defined. You can't just put anything you want if you if you want those traits to actually um, be useful. Um, so we process those traits, we apply them in things like combat, but in order to make sure they're the right things, what I want to do is a bit like what we do for creatures. So uh, let's have a look at a... So for creatures, as I think I spoke about last time, you can um, add certain limited set of traits to things, but they're well defined. So there's no chance of getting it wrong when you add something. And it also means we can do autom autom automate some of the features such as setting skills and um, bonuses to initiative or size or whatever. So I want to do something similar for items. So rather than being able to type in something like that and AB5, which I know are the right traits for if you want the weapon to be counted as very bulky, which means you will get a penalty if you don't have a high enough strength when you try and use it. AP5, it means it's now got armor piercing trait. Unless you know what those traits are, you don't necessarily know what to put in there. And yes, they are. Uh, there is some documentation on that, but nobody likes reading documentation. So it'd be nice if there was just a drop down list, which you can just add things in there. Um, similarly for armor, um, armor has allows you to set different energy types. Um, so things like reflect armor, so you can, you can give zero protection against normal weapons and 10 protection against um, energy weapons, in this case, laser weapons. Again, exactly what do you write in there? That seemed obvious to me when I was um, writing all this initially, but um, there's been a couple of comments of, yeah, well, how, how do we know exactly what to put in there? So a simple drop down and add in the different types which armor protects against would make things easier. So, and also whilst on the subject of that, okay, and a, there was a short pause there as I fix a bug I introduced about two minutes before starting this video. So let's try this again. Um, we have our character, uh, Fred, um, and we'll sort of demo some of the ways in which the armor works. So we've got our Fred token selected, uh, we've got some pre-prepared um, damage rolls here. So we've got our laser carbine. If we roll damage, then we can see uh, Fred's taken 20 points of damage, but he's got 18 points of armor. So he only actually takes two actual points of damage. And that's because he's got uh, a pot eight from the cloth and 10 points from reflect. And we can apply that to endurance and find he gets added to endurance. Um, in the case of the advanced combat rifle, uh, does 13 damage, but um, only eight points of armor is actually counted because that, that's not a laser weapon type. And okay, we'll apply it to there again. And done, he's taken some, some damage. If we remove the reflect armor, then we can apply the, the laser that damage. Um, in that in this case, if we just drag it on onto the counter sheet, that's another way of doing it. We'll take a full 12 points of damage because he's no longer got that um, protective late, um, protection against laser weapons. So we can just, uh, we still got six points to, to apply. So, yep, yeah, and Fred is now dead. So um, these status effects, by the way, can be, um, some of them can be just removed. So we can, uh, well, dead, you, you can't remove. You can set things back up and uh, unconscious uh, is removable. Yeah, if you're at zero hits, you can't remove dead. But if you get it, for some reason, it's decided you weren't, weren't quite dead, then you can unset that. Unset that status token if you want. 
Um, some other status tokens we support is, for example, you've got uh, dodge rolls. If you make a, a reaction dodge of any type, each time you click that, it will give you a penalty to um, all your actions. Um, you can clear that just by clicking on it. Uh, alternatively, if you're actually using the initiative tracker, it will actually automatically clear it at the end of your turn um, so, and sort of refresh it ready for for the next turn of combat. So, and it does similar things for stuns as well. It will, if you've taken stun damage, it will, or it should, um, automatically decrement the number of rounds you've got left whilst you're stunned. Um, and I think that's about it for now. Um, as I said, I'm going to, um, well, actually one other thing, uh, I have noticed there are some bugs around how uh, damage and armor is working. There are some combinations of whether it's a traveler or NPC, whether armor's been, depending on how armor's been set, um, there, there are some issues around that which I need to investigate and clean up. Hopefully nothing too complicated, um, but um, I expect that to go into the next patch, basically. So, yeah, that's about it for now. Um, I'm going to continue working on this and hopefully improving things over time. Okay, thank you for your interest.